Who are you? James. From? England. From? <laughs> Temples. From Temples. How's it going? James, welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. And James, who do you have beside you right now? Thomas Edison Wormsley. Hi, I'm Tom. Hello, Tom. Hi. Together you are? Temples. But we are missing a few people too. We should give them a shout out. Who are we missing right now from Temples? We're missing uh, Sam and Adam. Temples, right off the bat, I have a gift for you from April 1959. Really? A gift for you from April 1959, some Les Paul and... Mary Ford. Oh my God. Fantastic. Wow. The Save a Penny. Oh, that is amazing. Oh gosh. What's the tune called? At the Save a Penny Superstore. I don't actually know that track, so I'm very intrigued. Anything by Les Paul and Mary Ford is pretty amazing, so... Yeah, what can you tell the people about Les Paul and Mary Ford and Temples? I think... Les Paul and Mary Ford, or especially Les Paul, kind of invented rock and roll, I think, in many ways, in that he invented multi-track recording. And, um, yeah, and I think rock and roll, I guess, is done in one take, usually. But um, the whole production thing and how it's evolved when you've got these great, um, certainly psychedelic records that have fantastic recording techniques, it all stems from this genius who invented it and put an extra tape head on a machine. And not recording in a studio either. Yeah, yeah you know. exactly the same. The hotel rooms they chose, but we chose, uh, you know, it's kind of a hotel, parents' house, you know, you treat it like a hotel sometimes. Now, going back, I would like to ask you, Tom, what can you tell the people about this band right here, Tortian? Um, it's actually pronounced Torsion. Who is that right there? And could you please explain what is going on? Um, this is me wearing a Texas tuxedo, I think. Which a Canadian tuxedo, it's called also. Oh, is, is it? Oh, okay. Well, for the benefit of the viewers, a Canadian tuxedo. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it looks great, especially with um, the uh, the white sneakers. Do you remember this era of Tom at all, James? Yeah, yeah. I think this was the stage when we were in rival bands. And um, I remember seeing their band. And they were an incredibly tight, tight rock band. And I really envied how brilliantly there they were musically i was deluded and i thought you know my songwriting was far superior but the playing wasn't and they were a fantastic fantastically tight band and um yeah the t-shirts look cool is that a ramones t-shirt and what's the patch you have there i think it's a skateboarding patch we all used to skateboard when we were younger so and um, we still do whenever we can so how long was it between tor Shun. torsion and temples the big t bands um I'd say a good eight years, maybe. That's quite impressive that you found this picture, yeah. yeah. I've never seen that picture in my life. How about the Beckwith Emporium? Have you ever gone skating there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah. With my girlfriend a couple of times, yeah. It's, it's really nice. It's really it's nice to go there and laugh at the middle class people because you can kind of laugh at people that spend, you know, 10 quid on jam and we just jam around on, you know, ice skates yeah. trying to run people over. Now, aside from Les Paul, you guys are also into Chet Atkins? Yeah, that's, that's one of my big, big kind of inspirations, guitar-wise. Um, I just, I think it's, um, <clears throat> it's kind of like an orchestra he is by himself, which I think is really cool. Um, I'd love to hear what it'd sound like through a distortion pedal, though, because he's very clean and very clean-cut. But um, I just love the, the guitar that he used to use, which is the guitar that I now use. Not actually his. Maybe I could get hold of his. I love temples that you guys rep Chet Atkins so hard. So I thought I would give you a Chet Atkins LP, Legendary Performer. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Now check it out. If you open, it has a little booklet. If you pull it out, there's a little booklet in there. And the booklet is incredible. It's filled with all sorts of little tidbits, like studio logs, pictures from when he was in high school and everything. Oh, wow. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, fucking hell. How did you get turned on to Chet Atkins? Um, I think it was the track Mr. Sandman. Um, I saw like a live version of that on um on Betamax. Uh, no, it was on YouTube, and um, it was just really beautiful how he played, and it was just him playing on a guitar, and um, and that was it really, you know. And I th I think he was a massive influence on a lot of guitar players, but I only learned that after I'd discovered him. I think George Harrison was really influenced by Chet Atkins. Well, I thought also I would give you, since you rap Chet so hard, another Chet LP, the Teen Scene alternate cover from 1975. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Look at this. Look, it's like Christmas. 
James, how much clothes do you wear from thrift shops? Um, probably 50%. Like what you're wearing now, is any of that from a thrift shop? Shoes, yeah. Well, do you remember where you got them? Yeah, I got them in Nottingham from, uh, I can't remember the name of the place, but it's, it's just down from the Bodega Social, which is a venue that we played recently. And it's just a great little vintage shop, and they're really cheap, 25 quid. Get down there. And how about the fur, speaking of fur? This is, um, I think this is uh, Topshop Autumn Winter 2012, maybe. So, old hat, and it's, um, I got this for like 20 quid on eBay. I was thinking, you know, the Naz, you probably know about Todd Rundgren, but I thought I'd get you another gift here. It's the 30th anniversary of Ugly Things fanzine, and there's an article right there all about the Naz featuring an interview with Stooky, <laughs> the singer of the Naz. And yeah, if you open it up right there, all sorts of information on them, including them being banned from recording in England. Oh, right. All sorts of neat little tidbits here in Ugly Things. And this whole article is actually written by Greg Prevost from the legendary band The Chesterfield Kings. So all sorts of info there. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's oh, very kind. oh, sure. No problem. Are you guys into fanzines? Are you into magazines and stuff like that? Um, what's, it, what's the shindig, I guess, is like the new one that's kind of focusing on the more, I guess, psych kind of scene and the kind of garage rock. But um, our good friend does a little, I used to do like a little fanzine thing. Is it a fanzine? I don't know. What was it called? Uh, well, our, our friend Henry does one called Applecore, and um, he brings it around with us on tour, and yeah, broadens people's horizons. James of Temples, yeah. you like drawing, don't you? Yes, I do, actually. Um, in, my, in my spare time, you know, when I'm not sipping tea and visiting the Dr. Martin's factory, I like to do a bit of doodling with a pencil. I heard you're pretty good at it. Like, did you give your girlfriend a France Gall and Jane Birkin drawing? Yeah, I did, yeah. It was, um, this was... Um, when I had even less money than I had now, I used to draw her her presents for like birthday and Christmas. So, um, and we kind of met through me selling her a painting in the first place, of which she paid for, and I never gave her the money back, which was a Buddy Holly painting. It was one that you painted. Yeah, it's like how we met. Yeah. What's the importance, James, of Sonic Boom Records? Oh, massively important. Um, it turned me on to psych music, I guess. Um, a guy called Gus, who is like, um, it's almost like a what you'd expect of a cliche record shop owner, like in that he's so passionate about music and he's like an encyclopedia, and it's it's fantastic. And um, uh, yeah, he he was the one that basically said you should get this Nuggets record. It will it will show you kind of just like the basics, and um, and it really did. And then it kind of spurred me on from there to find whatever else I could. So it was kind of loads of compilations, buy them first, find the artist you want, see if they've got an album, see if they had like a weird B-side and it just starts the whole trail off. So it was great. I think he, he sold me Soft Machine Volume 1 and 2 on, on CD uh, as well. So yeah, he's, he was a great guy. He comes to our gigs every so often in England and um, I always say, you're welcome on the guest list. And he's like, are you sure? And it's like, for fuck's sake, yes, come in. Like, it's fine. <laughs> Did you also play there with Suki, your band Suki? We did play in there with Suki. Fucking hell. That was the most nerve-wracking gig I've ever done in my life. Because um, it was the first time I ever sang, but like an acoustic kind of style gig. And I bottled it. I started singing and just moved away from the mic. And um, there was only about 15 people watching. But it was absolutely horrendous to do. An important moment. It was. It was totally defying. I thought, I definitely don't want to be a musician. Did Edwin Collins give you a 70 pound mic? Yeah, he gave us some, um, it's probably worth more. It's, it's, a, it's a ribbon mic from like, I guess the 60s. It used to be owned by like the BBC. And I was thinking uh, like 70 pounds, it was like really heavy. Oh right, <laughs> yeah, that's really heavy, yeah, yeah, exactly. Can you describe it? What is it like? Like, it sounds pretty cool, Edwin Collins giving you a mic? Yeah, it's, um, I cheekily kind of noticed he had like a tray of mics, and I was like, oh, you've got quite a lot of these. And he was just like, oh, if you want, you can have, have that one. It hasn't got the stand for it, but you can have it. And I was just like, okay. And it needed a bit of fiddling around with, so um, I, got, I got a bit of sellotape out and fixed it, and it's still in that state. I haven't took it to anybody. And it's, um, yeah, it's just like, I think if you see the photos of like the Beatles in the cavern, um, it's, it's that mic. It's the same type of mic, a Reslo ribbon mic. So the history you're thinking must be pretty incredible on it. Yeah, I, d I have no idea who sang through it or, you know, who, who didn't. Why should people care about temples? Why should people care? Because it doesn't take a lot of effort to care. Yeah. All right, well, thanks so much, temples.
keep on rocking in the free world and do 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 do. All right, we go now. <laughs>